right now, Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. We've got things to talk about on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Good evening, everyone, and welcome inside the Fan Cave. Bob Pompiani with you until 11 o'clock, right here live on KDKA+. And if you're driving around town in your car tonight and listening to this call, 412-575-2600. We are live on 93.7 The Fan as well. And we have a lot to get into today. Of course, the Pirates have faded to last place. You believe that? Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, they were flirting with a game out of the last wild card. Now, they're five out, but they've allowed Chicago Cubs, Cincinnati Reds, and San Francisco Giants all to jump ahead of them in the chase for the third wild card. So that means about eight teams they got to deal with. Their season is pretty much gone at this point. I can't see them turning this around after a seven-game losing streak and nine out of ten and so they are now 56 and 61 with the thought of going to San Diego, which swept them here in Pittsburgh last week. And they got to play the Padres, who lost to the Marlins today. Thankfully for them, the teams ahead of them, many of them did lose today, including the Mets, the Cardinals, uh, as well as the Marlins and Braves. Uh, I'm sorry, the um, Padres and Braves. And the Braves are really in a tailspin. They used to be a lock for the number one wild card. Now they're all of a sudden in third, as both Arizona and San Diego have gone ahead of them. And then it's uh, Atlanta, followed by St. Louis, the Mets, the Giants, the Cubs, the Reds, and the Pirates. So they've fallen all the way down. And uh, David Bedmar came in today for two innings, which is unusual, but they really didn't have many other options at that point in that game. And they end up losing after they took the lead top of the 10th 5-4. to four, They lose 6-5. to five. So I ask you tonight at 412-575-2600, biggest reason for the seven-game losing, the 9 out of 10, what is it? You can say bullpen, you would probably be accurate. Other players, absolutely. There are contributors all over the place to a seven-game losing streak. Although you can't blame Andrew McCutcheon. He has hit the ball extremely well during this time. And this is, uh, to me, a problem. When a guy who's on the last legs of his career, a great career for Andrew McCutcheon, when he is one of your best OPI guy, OPS guys, um, you know, you've got some issues here now. Uh, Brian Reynolds and McCutcheon. That's about it at this point on a consistent basis. Yes, O'Neill Cruz is... Hit some home runs, but he also has left runners on base. Disciplined baseball, not necessarily his best at this point. Uh, so they got issues. Key Brian Hayes still cannot figure out how to get an extra base hit. G1 Bay shouldn't be on the roster, to be honest. Uh, Rowdy Tellez has reverted back to what he was at the beginning of the season. He hasn't had come up with a productive hit in quite some time. And they haven't gotten contributions for anyone else. They're young guys. They counted on Jack Sawinski and Henry Davis, both now in the minor leagues. The question moving forward is what do you do with guys like Davis? Knowing that Andy Rodriguez is going to be back, knowing that Joey Bart has asserted as the number one catcher and probably the best move that Ben Charrington ever made. So they got a lot of issues, and I'd like to know what you think is the number one root cause of why this has happened. A lot of you will start with the owner. I'm going to dismiss him for this conversation only because you know everyone knows how Bob Nutting is as an owner. Uh, he, he's, you know, profits are very important to him maybe more so than wins or, or having an opportunity to win. You can spend as much as you want. As I remind everyone, there's no limit to what you can spend in this system they used. So bottom line is, take him out of the conversation. Is it the manager, the general manager, the player specifically who? Call me at 412-575-2600. Also talk about the Steelers have that first preseason game against the Texans. They have the Bills coming up Saturday. You'll see it on KDKA as well, the 7 o'clock kick. 6.30 pregame coverage, but some of the good moments. Who do you like from what you've seen? And the one thing I did see from offense, you know, Arthur Smith knows what he's doing back there from what I can tell. Watching practices and also with play action with, you know, his, his emphasis is to run to set up pass. Yes, you know, a lot of you may disagree with that in a league that is fast becoming a, you know, a passing league. But I'll remind you that San Francisco runs the ball extremely well. I'll remind you the teams that have, have had success have run the ball extremely well. That would include Kansas City as well. I know they got Mahomes, but when they want to run it, they can. There are a lot of teams that use that formula to win, uh, and the Steelers have the makings of it. They still need help with a second wide receiver. I liked what I saw from Van Jefferson in that game. I also thought a guy like Scotty Miller certainly has a role. Austin did well, but they need somebody, you know, more with a resume on that side opposite George Pickens. So that leads us into Brandon Ayuk, which is a stalemate right now. And to me, the longer it goes, the more difficult it may be for the Steelers to have an opportunity at him, only because 
the Niners, you know, still haven't ruled out signing him. Uh, they've been looking for some compensation, which they haven't gotten from the Steelers. Apparently, the best compensation they got was from Cleveland, yet he doesn't want to go to Cleveland. It takes two to tangle here. Not only does San Francisco have to get what they want out of this deal, but Ayuk needs to agree to a term before he goes to that team. Otherwise, why would you want to acquire him? Because he's in a fifth-year option. 412-575-2600. Call. Air your opinions. We have a lot of calls I see. I'm sure you're anxious to get your opinion in. We'll do it next. We're right here live on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call, seven nights a week on KDKA+. All right, welcome back. Our GMC Sierra tweet of the night comes from PFF Pittsburgh Steelers style. Corey Trice looked pretty good. 18 snaps, 76.9 coverage grade. He also allowed minus two yards in coverage, one tackle for loss. You know, this was his first game. I expect him to show more as he goes through this. They're hoping that he can become um, the opposite, the uh, you know, opposite of Joey Porter Jr. over there on the other side. Both those guys are tall at six foot three. Both had pretty good histories in college, and Trice had ACL problems, and he had one last year. Hopefully he can overcome it, because I think he's a very intriguing prospect. Right now it's Dante Jackson's job uh, to lose. I mean, he's the guy they brought in for Deontay Johnson, so we'll see how that goes. Also, if you want to call in, let me know what you thought about the, quote, dynamic kickoff that we saw in the first game. Uh, seems to me that's not so dynamic, and I'm going to wonder what it will take for it to be dynamic. Uh, you know, a lot of different variations can happen throughout uh, that, you know, lineup, the way they do it in the landing zone, the setup zone, the kicking zone, and all that sort of stuff. So call me at 412-575-2600. Let's go to the lines, beginning with our first caller tonight, Mike in Newcastle. Hello, Mike. How are you tonight? Bob, how you doing? What's up? Oh, not too much. I want to talk about uh, the Pirates, and uh, you were asking uh, what went wrong, uh, I think what Ben Charrington really needs to do, and obviously uh, he's uh, on a shoestring budget, he so-called has this robust minor league system full of pitchers and stuff. He has to make a push trade because there's no point of just hanging on this minor league system because I think uh, I, uh, down the road i got to replace guys. There's, the road's getting uh, very uh, short for him. he got to uh, get on the phone, make a trade, push in and get the get an impact uh, trade that he's not more comfortable with making. I, hey, listen, I agree with that in many ways. Uh, they have a lot of pitching on the way, which is good. You can build a rotation. Uh, you mentioned another word there that really kind of resonates with me, and that's shoestring budget. And this is the thing that makes it difficult for any GM. And I think you saw that at the trade deadline. Because Bob Nodding might not want the biggest, most extravagant guy in a trade who costs more, you ended up with Brian De La Cruz. Now, first of all, I thought Kiner Falefa was a really good trade. I, I didn't even know he was available by trade. He's a guy we weren't really talking about. But Brian De La Cruz took a back seat to Jazz Chisholm, I thought. Uh, and they could have maybe made a bigger move for Chisholm or anyone like that. Instead, they ended up with De La Cruz, who, listen, he has 18 home runs. But he strikes out an awful lot. I, to me, he's like a right-handed hitting Jack Sawinski. At some point in this offseason, if they retain the management staff and the coaching staff, what they need to do is, number one, they'll put him on a hot seat. But number two, they need to spend money in the offseason to bring in as many bats as they can because the internal answers are just not there. Uh, so you have the pitching, and it could be a very formidable and impressive pitching staff, starting staff specifically. Bullpen, we can talk about another day. But... You need bats to make their job a little easier, and, and, and they don't. And it also leads to another question: Do you bring Andrew McCutcheon back for one more year? Um, we'll see about that. But you know, you might need that spot as a DH for somebody like Henry Davis if he can't have a position. So, lots of interesting questions. Chuck in Uniontown is our next caller. Chuck, always welcome here. What's going on, man? Good evening. Thanks once again, Bob. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The blame for this is two areas. The bullpen and the manager's seat. Too many questionable decisions by Shelton. And the bullpen is just, that, that's a total disaster because that was supposed to be a strength when the year started. Mm -hmm. And I think back, Bob, to, you know, trying to compare this to uh, 2011, 12, and 13. 2013 rectified the problems of 2011 and 12. But Look into 2025. I I don't think this is as good a club. You know, I don't think this is as much, as much position to rectify in 2025. 
as the one yeah. was 10 years ago. Uh, what do you think? Do you, do you think the ones 11 and 12 were better to start off 13? Yes, and I also think you raise a couple of questions about what they do. Their team, to me, a lot of people pointed to 2025. Uh, and you're right, the bullpen was supposed to be the strength. It's turned out to be a weakness, and who would have thought that both Holderman and Bednar would be as bad as they are, given you know, all-star caliber guys. And the way Holderman started the season, I thought he was going to be lights out, set up guy along with Chapman. It looked really good, but it hasn't worked out that way. But they have so many holes offensively. Brian Hayes, uh, he signed a long-term contract. They're not going to really do anything with him. They just better hope he hits better. You cannot hit, uh, you know, Third base is not necessarily a defensive position that I look for. It's nice to have a gold glove there. Third base is a position I look for power. I look for gap to gap. It doesn't have to be home runs. Just get the ball in play, put it at the fence, drive in runs. Brian Hayes hasn't done that. He's, he hasn't had many extra base hits all year. And how many years is that going to be able to continue knowing what they're paying him? It's not that much money, generally speaking, but it is for that position, and it is for a guy who doesn't get that many RBI. Let's go back to the lines. We got Nick, or is it Rick? Rick in North Hills. What's up, Rick? How are you? Yeah, I was calling about um, the manager, Shelton. Um, you know, going with Bednar. Uh, and, you know, he's been pitching so bad. And why would he, you know, keep going with him when the game's on the line? I well, mean, you're talking about a second inning? Well, because they had used just about everyone else leading up to that inning. Uh, and they left themselves kind of empty out there. I'm not so sure, you know, Chapman had been used in that game. Um, Nicholas had been used in that game. I, I forget how many relievers were in that game. And it doesn't help that your starter only goes, what, four innings. So Bailey Falter has not been as good as, of late. And, and last night, Skeens, you know, you watch him, his velocity's not as good as it was earlier. This makes me wonder about Skeens. If they totally fall out of this thing, and they may already be there, do they shut him down at all? And if they do, does that hurt his chances to be Rookie of the Year? Because if you look at it, Jackson Merrill of San Diego has been lights out. That dude is really good. So this is very interesting how that will play out. But, you know, Derek Shelton is trying to make the moves he can make. He only has what he has. And when Holderman and Bednar go south on you, it's very difficult to try to manipulate through that bullpen. That's not an excuse. That's, I think, the true situation here. What are you going to do uh, with what you have? 412-575-2600. Dave in Brownsville is next up. Hello, Dave. How are you? I'm doing real well uh, this evening. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy your show. There's Thanks. been a lot of things that have been said. I think uh, the Pirates, like you said, uh, they're not hitting. each. I think they need to take a look at each player, and they, they might want to uh, make some substitutes there on each player, the ones that aren't producing – and yeah, as but, you said, but who pitchers are not producing when you give me examples I, of that like who what do you do well uh i don't know you'll have to look at their bench and uh, maybe you have to go down to uh uh triple a look in AAA, I, I know there, there's not many people down there doing a job either down. you know i mean who do you put for hayes if you're going to bench him or move him you can't like next year i find it interesting I, i'm curious what they're going to do O'Neill Cruz leads the majors shortstops in errors. You can't have that continue. I think he's a little too tall to play that position anyway. Is, is it realistic to move him to the outfield and put uh, Kiner Falefa at short and Gonzalez at second? Uh, w what else could you do? You're going to have three catchers on your roster, and one would be Bart, one would be Rodriguez, one would be Davis. You can't have three catchers on your roster because you're just not going to be able to do that. So you carry two, but one has to be a DH. But if you bring McCutcheon back, he's your DH. What do you do with him in the back? Davis has got to hit. Somehow, someway, they got to figure him out. He's doing better at AAA right now. It will be interesting if he comes up at the end of this year if he can show you something so that next year you know you have a place for him. And that may make up one of their decisions. Matt in Butler is next. Hello, Matt. How are you? Hey, hey Bob. Hey, all of these calls point to the same thing. The starting pitching held us into the, some games, which we knew was not sustainable. The offense is terrible. It's been terrible all year. The defense is shoddy. Shortstop's not the only position. And we've got several players on this team that aren't, NFL, or aren't Major League Baseball roster players for other teams. You mentioned a couple. There's a couple more that can go. This is just a bad roster. And to think that... People were talking a couple weeks ago, oh, if, if they make the playoffs, this is a scary team. If they make the playoffs, we know they're not, but it wasn't a scary team because they're bad all over. Yeah, well, 
you have all the proof in the world to, to show you that now because they are been bad. And this is what's led to one and nine in these critical games. Let's go out to Phil in Greensburg. Hello, Phil. How are you? Hey, Bob. How are you? What's up? Uh, a couple of points. This is the second year in a row. People have to, the Pirates have to realize Dave Bednar, David Bednar is no longer a closer. He's thrown as hard as he did two, three years ago, but his ball's flat. There's no movement to it anymore. I think he has to, they have to use him for middle relief. Uh, I think Chapman has to be re-signed. He's the only consistent uh, reliever we have right now, in yeah. my opinion. And he still hits it at uh, 105 on the meter. <laughs> There's nothing not to right, like about that. Exactly. <laughs> Plus, uh, uh, O'Neill Cruz, other than a fastball, he cannot hit off-speed pitching. They're going to have to work with him on that. And last, Bob, uh, they have to revamp. Uh, they're going to have to get rid of some ball players that are not productive. Uh, you made the point about G1 Bay. He shouldn't even be on this team. But Andrew McCutcheon, how are you going to not DH that guy next year when he's probably going to end up with 20 home runs? Uh, yeah. Well, he's still I, that's, catalyst, Bob. He has bat speed. He does. Yeah. He showed it again today. Up against the break. Thank you for that. But um, you know, but the bottom line is they have a lot of issues they got to take care of in a very short amount of time, and they don't. I don't, they don't have answers internally. That means spend money externally if that's how you have to do it. we got to take a quick break, come back with more. Join us tonight for the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown. It'll be on a little late tonight, about midnight, because of the golf that was on earlier. We have a feisty show ahead with Joe Starkey, Andrew Filipponi, and Ray Fittipaldo. That's tonight at midnight on KDKA. We'll be right back.